Welcome to the Diversity Talk series powered by Great Companies, Great Leaders podcast and sponsored by Best Companies AZ and Career Connectors. I'm your host, Christine Gannon, the founder and CEO of Brightworks Consulting. We're a boutique consulting firm that's focused on helping companies at the community level with DE&I solutions that really make a difference, whether it's developing the entire strategy or it's providing the latest best practices and policies we offer a roadmap for companies to improve the culture of their company. Today, we're honored to host the Diversity Talk series that was created to connect with award-winning companies who are committed to fostering a work environment where the differences that we're born with and those we acquire throughout our lives are understood, they're valued, and they're celebrated. We're having conversations with Arizona's top employers to discuss how a focus on diversity and inclusion leads to better performance, increased innovation, and enhanced ability to address customer needs and a more vibrant culture. And today we have another great conversation with award-winning company, Will Scott Mobile Mini. And we have with us today, Davida Redman, the Director of Inclusion and Diversity and Community. Davida currently serves as a Director of Inclusion and Diversity and Community. And in this role, which she's held since October of 2020, She's responsible for the strategy and execution of global inclusion and diversity and community efforts. Recently, she spearheaded the launch of five inclusive, inclusiveness resource teams, also known as IRTs, that foster an inclusive and diverse workplace aligned with companies' values and strategy. And in addition, she also launched a global community giving program that unites over 4,400 plus, plus employees in four countries around giving back locally, which is just tremendous. Previously, David has spent nine years serving in various marketing and sales roles for Fiat, Chrysler, Automobiles, and Caterpillar. She also spent four years outside of corporate America focused on growing her family. She's a proven leader that has both domestic and international experience across diverse business units and multiple industries with Fortune 100 companies. Currently, she serves as the board chair for Playworks Arizona and the VP of Marketing for the Phoenix chapter of the National Sales Network. Davida is also a board member of the Minions of Kindness Fund. Davida, welcome. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm super excited to be here. We are gonna start our conversation with you telling us a little bit about your role. Absolutely. Really excited to share a little bit more about what we do at Wolf from an inclusion and diversity perspective. This role originated in October of 2020 post-merger uh, between Wolf Scott and Mobile Mini and really excited that we have been able to, over the last two years, launch five inclusiveness resource teams, commonly known as employee resource groups anywhere else. Um, as well as relaunch an inclusion and diversity council that is comprised of 24 of our most senior leaders up to and including our CEO, which many other companies do not have that level of senior leadership involvement. I'm really proud to, to say that our organization, and our employees, our leaders are truly committed to inclusion and diversity, so much so that it's one of our company values. I would love for us to stop for a second and talk about IRTs versus ERGs. Is there any difference? And if there is, why did you call it something different? Yeah, they are essentially the same thing. They are voluntary employee-led groups that really allow those differences that you talked about in your introduction to shine through the organization and how our employees are truly embraced. Uh, for all of the diverse perspectives that they bring to the company in many different forms or facets. We decided to call them inclusiveness resource teams here uh, to be a little bit more unique in how we are driving greater inclusion in our organization. And we really wanted inclusive and inclusiveness to be part of the, the name for our employee resource group. I love it. I love it. It has a message and it's, it's a strong message about inclusivity. What kind of IRTs are in place? What, what kind of um, teams have come together? 
Sure. We have five so far, and the original five that we launched really service our female population and those who identify as female, our veterans, our Hispanic, our Latinx population, our Black and African American population, and our LGBTQIA plus population as well. But what I will tell you that I think is a little unique to our organization and the way that we view employee resource groups, or in our case, including this resource team, we really believe in the power of allyship. And so it doesn't matter uh, whether you believe that you identify with a demographic for a group or not. You don't have to be a female or someone who identifies as female to really want to empower and break down barriers for our women in our organization and in society. And so anyone that really believes in the mission of the inclusiveness resource team is welcome to join, welcome to participate, welcome to roll up their sleeves, build a better organization. Because so many organizations are curious about, I'm gonna call them ERGs because in industry, they're known as ERGs. So because so many companies are interested in that. Can you talk a little bit about tactically? What do your teams focus on and what are some of the activities that they do? Absolutely. Programming is very important. And I'll tell you, I appreciate the fact that I wear two hats from an IND perspective and a community perspective. That is very intentional. And they focus a lot on reaching back and reaching out to the communities that they serve, not only geographically, but equally from a representation perspective. So these groups will do a lot of fundraising, a lot of um, ways to really reach back into those communities. Equally, from a, an education perspective, these groups have been foundational in really, really helping our employees to understand some of those differences that are inherent, whether it's culture, whether it's gender, um, whether it's so, uh, sexual orientation, they are instrumental in helping employees that maybe don't have exposure or experience learn something more and equally work well with anyone and everyone within our organization. That's incredible. I know, um, I know how important these groups are to employees and how important they are to the fabric of the company, but also the culture. I think that um, these teams and these groups really foster a sense of inclusiveness by the activities that they do and the mission that they take on really in terms of how they impact the company, especially when, when new employees join. I think that they have a significant role. Absolutely. We see, and I know it's not only by the virtue of my role, but whenever I sit across from a candidate and answer questions or share with them about our organization, uh, they are very interested. The generation um, millennials and Gen Zs are very interested in the diversity of an organization the the ideas and innovation towards in inclusion, companies with a purpose, right? Not just uh, profits, but equally understanding the impact, their footprint, whether it's from an ESG perspective or anything else. And so it's really important to make sure that we are providing an environment where our future talent feels welcome, feels appreciated, feels like they belong, and can really bring their best selves to work. Fantastic. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and ask you a question related to the organization and how you feel like your company demonstrates its commitment to DNI. Your role is a significant commitment, right? And a significant message to the company and also the community that you're invested. But what are other ways does do, do you feel that um, there's demonstration of commitment? Great question. I will tell you, and I mentioned it a little earlier, I think the fact that being committed to inclusion and diversity is a company value, speaks volumes. We could have had a very generic people-centric value, but we chose to really specify and honor the fact that we are committed to building the most inclusive organization, knowing that when we lead with inclusion, we will attract all the kinds of diversity that we are after to truly have a best in class organization and one that people want to come and work for. So I think starting with the values and knowing that it was very intentional from the beginning after the merger says a lot about our leadership and the mindset towards inclusion. I 
think it sounds like um, organizations like yours, they're not just a poster on the wall or even a virtual poster on the wall that expresses their values, but it really is something that's lived every day. And hopefully that people are positively challenged to, to show up with those values as well. Absolutely. If we look at a little bit at policies and practices related to DEI, what do you feel like are the types of programming that you've either put in place or the organization has put in place to promote DEI in the culture? I would have to start just based on where we are in our journey, really pointing to those inclusiveness resource teams and standing up five um, from the very beginning. I think that is a significant statement in terms of honoring our employees and their differences and really valuing them. Another point that I would speak to is on unconscious bias training. And so I developed, uh, I looked at several different resources and, and best practices around a lot of different industries and organizations and really curated programming that talks about not only what unconscious bias is and the fact that it's how our brain works, but equally understanding microaggressions and how they show up at work, really breaking down stereotypes and when they happen, how they happen, and how that impacts an employee. I've successfully trained hundreds of employees, both senior leaders and field leadership and commercial new hires to the organization. And it's been really great to sit and listen and hear them share experience, hear them learn from others in terms of their lived experiences and understand that everybody's walk through life is not the same. And the more that we learn about uh, that and share and feel comfortable and have that level of psychological safety, the better our organization is gonna be in so many different ways. Absolutely. And I love that you shared that there's time for employees to talk about their, their lived experience, right? Because I think Sometimes the content is phenomenal, but also listening and hearing, you know, this is my lived experience. This is what's transpired for me. And this is how this shows up in the workplace for me. And you might not be aware of it. Um, there's actually a test that Harvard University put out online and it and it's for anyone to take. It's no cost. And um, I can put a link in the comments below, but it um, it really challenges people to think about do you have what lens are you looking through when you show up at the workplace, whether it's virtual or in person? What lens are you looking through and maybe a bias that you didn't even know you had? And so the test really um, this the results are interesting. So there was some commentary related to the, re the results that people were getting and people were saying, I thought I was the most non-biased person on the planet. And after taking this test, I realized I have a long way to go. I didn't even realize some of the biases I had and, and none of them are intentional, right? But until we know, we, we don't know what we don't know. So um, I thought the test was pretty amazing actually in identifying some things that it might be a blind spot for people. Absolutely, and you really touched on it. I think awareness is the key. That's the first step, understanding uh, that there are different experiences and really being okay with uh, accepting that, you know, everyone walks through life, interpreting it in a different way, a different way based on their lens. Uh, the minute we get through that piece of it and really understand now the education can begin and, and the sharing can begin as well. And equally, I see light, light bulbs go off all the time. And what I love about that training as well that I'll share with you, Christine, is I have changed it after several, after many sessions, it is a living, breathing training session based on input and, and influence that I get from the classes as I train them. You know, it continues to morph and develop into what it is that it needs to be for our people. And I, I love that. You brought up a really important point without even realizing it, which is any type of programming related to DE and I cannot be static, right? It has to evolve with the organization. As the organization matures um, and transforms, it really can't be a one and done. It can't be that you would just put in unconscious bias training, check the box and keep going. It really is, you know, taking a step back strategically and looking, what does our organization need today? And then, you know, a year from now, what does it need now versus, you know, it's just really evolving. Absolutely. And I'm looking, I'm proud to look back a year from now and see how far we've come. 
but I'm even more excited to look back next year and the year after and to see how far we've really been able to transform the organization. And more importantly, the lives of our employees, everything that I look at is transformational for our employees globally and, and really making a difference in their lives and making it, uh, making our world better in this, my sphere of influence. Absolutely. So four walls that I can, can control and, and try to impact. It has a strong ripple effect, right? It has a very strong ripple effect. So I have a couple last questions for you quickly. Why is your company a great place to work? Our company is a great place to work. One, I will start with senior leadership. I think from the top down, we really are not just talking the talk, specifically around inclusion and diversity, community, safety, uh, commitment to excellence, all of those things, but we are walking the walk. Um, we're an amazing company with a really great future and growth trajectory. And it's because of the, the, the impact and the influence of our amazing employees. So I think if anyone is looking for an opportunity to work for a company that's doing great things with amazing people and wants to come along for the ride, this is a really great place and a really great time to be a part of the Wolf Got Mobile Mini family. It sounds like it. Everything you shared sounds like it. Absolutely. So final question, who's your hero? Great question and a tough one. I am going to, to go old school and really talk about my, my dad and, and my family. Um, we moved to the U.S. when I was three years old for a chance at the American dream from the only English speaking country in South America, Guyana. And every, every sacrifice that my parents made in order to give us a chance for a better life, to be able to look back now and see how much I've advanced in my career uh, because of those opportunities and the foundation that they were able to provide for me, it, it's tremendous. It's amazing. And I hope it's inspiring to my children as well. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Thanks so much for being with us today on Diversity Talks. And Appreciate all the wisdom, expertise, and knowledge you've poured into our audience so that they can take advantage of some of the pathways that you've gone down and have been successful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Brightworks Consulting hosts this podcast and YouTube channel to spotlight the leadership around the world that is changing lives. Brightworks offers a myriad of consulting services in the public and private sector, to include diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions for any size company. You can find us at www.brightworksconsulting.com. We're honored to have Best Companies AZ as a presenting sponsor for this podcast. Best Companies AZ is your number one source for regional employer branding. You can find them at www.bestcompaniesaz.com.